Good morning and God bless you. We're delighted to have you with us here this morning. Maybe this is your first time tuning in and joining us. We extend a warm welcome to you and trust you're blessed and edified with what you hear today. We want to begin with prayer. We want to continue to pray about the direction and the condition of our nation and our world and our communities. We also want to pray for our local community here that God would continue to open up doors of utterance and influence. We want to remember Cornerstone Pentecostal Church and lastly, our brothers and sisters around the world. Maybe you have a special and spoken request. It's a perfect time for us to all pray together. Let's pray. Father, we love you, we praise you, and we worship you. Father, we thank you for the abundance of all things. Father, we pray for our nation, the condition of our nation, the direction of our nation. Father, we pray for a genuine Holy Ghost revival that incorporates the Word of God, the people of God, the Spirit of God that can impact this nation and world. We pray for our local community and region. We pray that you'll continue to open up doors of utterance and influence. We also pray for Cornerstone Pentecostal Church. Pray that you'll open up the windows of heaven, pour out your divine favor. And lastly, our brothers and sisters around the world, you would furnish them with a hedge of protection. We ask all this in the name above every name, the name of Jesus Christ, everybody said amen. Several verses of scripture we want to read. First one is found in Matthew chapter 24 and verse number 10. Matthew 24 and verse number 10 says this, and then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. And Jesus is moving from the big picture, nation against nation and, and wars and rumors of wars. And now he's moving it into individual relationships, talking about the end times. And there shall be many offended, shall betray one another and shall hate one another. One more scripture, Mark 13 and 12. Now the brother shall betray his brother to death and the father, the son, the children shall rise up against their parents and shall cause them to be put to death. The breakdown of the American family, actually the families everywhere around the world. But notice that it starts out with kingdom against kingdom, nation against nation, wars, rumors of wars, pestilence, famines, and now it's affecting those individual relationships and most notably the family. I wanna to talk to us for just a few moments about loyalty in the end times. Loyalty in the end times. That word betray um, is far different from denial. Peter denied the Lord, but of course, Judas betrayed Jesus, big difference there. And the word betray, betrayal is only used a handful of times throughout the word of God. And it means to turn over, to, be, to betray the trust, to, to, to be a traitor, to be a traitor. The word traitor, of course, is found in uh, Romans chapter number one as one of the conditions of the human race after all the... God giving them up and God turning them over. One of those is traitor. But betrayal and the breaking down of relationships, and we're not just talking about the breaking down of a relationship where uh, families are being impacted. Oh, I'm leaving home and I'm leaving. And, and we're not talking about that. We're talking about the spirit of the age, the spirit of the hour is actually impacting the family and the most interpersonal relationships. And the Bible said in um, Mark chapter number 13, and shall hate 
one another. In another place it says, because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. I want to talk to us about loyalties in the end time. This, the world has fallen apart. That doesn't even need a lot of qualification. We already see these things happening. It's, it's, it's an incredible hour in which we live. The scriptures um, in Matthew chapter 24, most notably, that's talking about the, the unfolding of end time events. Um, it, we can see that all around us. We can see the beginning stages of this and even maybe even beyond that all around us in our culture. But the church of the living God, I want to tell you, the political realm is falling apart. Hollywood is falling apart. Professional sports is falling apart. The hu all human institutions are falling apart. But the church of the living God is going to be safe. I'm not saying we're not going to take some hits and there's not some, some, some backsplash that's going to splash over into the church. But the gates of hell shall not prevail. I want to talk to us about three loyalties that must remain intact throughout the end times or as long as the church is going to be here. Okay. Number one, the preeminent loyalty that has to be in place is loyalty to the truth. Loyalty to the truth. It is the preeminent loyalty because it qualifies every other loyalty. If we're not, if we're not going to be loyal to the preeminent revealed truth to us from the word of God, the spirit of God and the people of God, then we really do not have any loyalties because there has to be an anchor that is loyal to the truth. People are going to leave the truth. I love you, but I'm not leaving the truth. People are going to uh, become, betray the truth. Uh, this is where I believe even some persecution is coming from. From time to time, I'll see something on just YouTube where I'm an ex-apostolic or I'm an ex, and I had to do this and I was made to do that. And I just like, okay. You know, there's people that are going to be bitter. There's people that are going to become demonically influenced. We can't help that. But ladies and gentlemen, you are not made to do anything. We're not made. I thank God for truth. I thank God for the truth of the word of God that we embrace and we love. But as truth is revealed to us, we have a responsibility to obey those things, and you already understand that. But my preeminent loyalty is going to be to the truth. If my family doesn't understand that, I'm staying with the truth. If my friends don't understand that, um, I'm sticking with the truth. Even those that were in the church at one time, I'm staying with the truth. That is the preeminent loyalty. My next loyalty is to God ordained leadership. It is a known fact, it's a known scriptural fact and a spiritual principle in reality that we have to have headship in our lives. Not only does it protect us, but it's just the absolute will of God. First Corinthians chapter number 11 fully reveals this to us. Hebrews chapter 13, verse number 17, and um, many other places talk about needing a covering and needing headship. I believe that one of the most important loyalties in the end time is to have a unflinching, untarnished loyalty to God ordained leadership, beginning with your parents. And obviously I'm talking about parents that are in the church and parents that are living for God, even though uh, my father is still alive. I believe he's 95 years old. Um, I still love him. I pray for him. Um, I honor him as 
my, my, my earthly father, but obviously there's some limitations uh, that are attached with that because I'm not going to, if he tells me to do something and it's contrary to the word of God, I'm sorry, I'm loyal to the truth. That's my preeminent loyalty. But I'm specifically talking about parents that are in the church. Listen to the word of God. Children, obey your parents in the Lord for this is right. It's the first command uh, with promise according to the Decalogue. And so I want to live a lengthy, prosperous, blessed life. And that is directly attached to honoring and obeying your parents and all the children that are watching this said, amen. Hebrews chapter 13, verse number 17 says, obey them that have the rule over you. The placement of godly leadership in my life and in your life, beginning with your parents, is divinely, it's divinely, undeniable, irrevocable, and irreplaceable. And somebody said, amen. So, we're talking about loyalty in the end times. People are betraying one another, nation against nation, people against people, family members against family members, brothers turning in their brothers. We're talking about we're talking about a spirit of hatred and bitterness and rancor that is affecting the human family where family members will attack other family members to the point of turning them in to where they are put to death. Parents against their children, children against their parents. My preeminent loyalty is to the truth. It is to God ordained and God placed leadership. And number three, it's to the church of the living God. The church is unlike any other group or man-made institution or environment in the earth, and as I've already mentioned, according to Matthew chapter number 16, the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. They're gonna prevail, they're gonna overcome human institutions. You and I are safe in the church of the living God. My relationship with my brothers and sisters within the body of Christ is precious and priceless. Somebody said, amen. Are there, are there issues in the church? Listen, ladies and gentlemen, any, any place where you're going to have people, it's going to take work. It's going to take effort. The beauty of being in the church of the living God is we are empowered. We have principles. We have, um, I hate to use the word rules, but you have a safety net in that the word of God protects everybody. It protects relationships. It protect, It protects relationships in marriage. <coughs> Excuse me. It protects relationships between brothers and sisters. It protects relationship between leaders that go bad. There is safety in the church that is found no one, nowhere else. My earthly family and friends might still be able to enjoy one another, but they can never fully grasp the depth of spiritual regeneration like my very own brothers and sisters. When I got in the church, when I got in the church, I became an ex-drug addict, an ex-alcoholic for all intended purposes. It was, it was an alcoholic, no job, no future, no hope, nothing. Once I was born again, there was a dynamic, radical change cut my hair, got a job, had a desire to become responsible to, to live out and fulfill the word of God in my life. And my family, being totally ignorant, said he's now in a cult. To them, it was just another phase of my life. First, it was drug addict, then a heavy metal rocker. Now he's a Jesus freak. I'm glad to report to you that 35 years later, I am a happy Jesus freak. Okay, so this works. My family didn't understand that. My, my brothers and sisters understood the dynamical resistance that I experienced as an individual coming into this. It's no time to run back to the bar. It's no time to run back to drugs. It's no time to go, to go back to some compulsive behavior. It's time to find safety and, and security 
in the church of the living God. My brothers and sisters will pray for me. My brothers and sisters will, will, will stand with me. My brothers and sisters, many of them already comprehend and understand having been through some of the same struggles themselves. So there is, there is a safety and a security in being in the church of the living God throughout the end times. So I wanted to talk about loyalty because you already, we're living in an hour where there are no loyalties. There's no loyalties politically. There's no loyalties personally. People are, people are selling out for money or advantage or whatever. There are loyalties that must remain until the very end. And I'll leave you with this scripture according to Proverbs 26. Most men will proclaim everyone his own goodness, but a faithful man who can find. I'd like to also insert instead of faithful, but a loyal man who can find. I really do believe in the end time as we continue to move into the end time as the church of the living God, that we're gonna continue to understand how precious and priceless loyalty really is. God bless you. Thank you for joining us here this morning. We'll look forward to seeing you tomorrow.